Good morning, Web3, and welcome to the 100X podcast. We've got a special episode for you guys today. Okay. It's been um, a hot minute since we've talked about GameFi. And so we are joined by the legendary Omar Ganem. Is it Ganem? Ganem? You got it right. Ganem. Omar yeah. Ganem, um, head of gaming at Pokestarter, one of the, I would say, big fish in the pond that is Web3 gaming. I saw a thread you posted the other day, Omar, about having tested like 500 different games in Web3 and GameFi and play to earn, whatever whatever they call the space right now. Um, and I, I felt like I had to get you on the show. I genuinely think gaming and the gaming space is going to be a core part of the future of blockchain and the future of, of crypto and where it all moves. And it, it just feels like maybe we're in the earliest stages. So most of the games I've played have probably been underwhelming, um, but I'm excited to find ones that are honestly excellent. And, and it seems like you have the intel about what's going on in the space. Thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Um, I'm glad that uh, that thread came across your board. Honestly, it's the reason I did it was essentially for people like you, right? Like people that um, genuinely have interest in the space, but are also like generally underwhelmed by the quality that this that yeah. they've seen. Because what tends to like get the most publicity is typically stuff that like doesn't necessarily do too well, like you know, just negative publicity overall. Yeah. Um, oh, I lost all my money doing this, or I, I bought this asset and now it's worth nothing, blah, blah, blah. But like people don't really talk about the games that are in, you know, early alpha builds and the games that are doing exactly. close betas and, and so on. And so, um, you know, I, I, I just tried to grab people's attention saying that 500 plus, we probably actually crossed that number, uh, by miles, but it's just because we've been in the space since 2021 testing stuff that hasn't even been announced yet. And so, so many games come across the board and sometimes, you know, it's a long, extensive, play test other times it's just a, a very quick like five minutes rejection type of play test yeah. <laughs> um but we see a lot of the stuff that's like going on behind the scenes we see a lot of the stuff that's like not public and that excites me and i just wanted to share that sense of excitement with you know people like you that um see the potential but just maybe aren't convinced yet like i i wanted to basically tell people like the good games are coming you just have to like hold on um and you don't need to change your mind you don't need to like yeah. start pretending like the games that you don't enjoy are fun like you actually can demand more i think part of the issue with early like game five as you call it was people just like had very low expectations um it was it was basically like studios were building games for like crypto bros right so it was it, well, exactly i think that's part of i maybe that's part of my negative perception is i don't come from the game five space like you do or even the gaming space right like i i work in crypto all day long and i started in DeFi, and so maybe the games that i'm seeing anyway the games that i was trying out are focused on making money not on making yes. a good game so your, your constant that's... like what was on your yep. timeline was probably the 100x tokens the games that exactly. can earn 100 dollars a day <laughs> like and, and that's fine i think there is like i guess it's fun it's if i'm making money that. but eventually it blows up and it's not fun so i want yeah, the games exactly. that are actually fun and using blockchain to make the game better yeah. And now quickly a word from our sponsors. Astrobit is changing the trading world with a system that works like a game console for trading. Now anyone can easily bring their own trading strategies or purchase a pre-built one from the marketplace. No coding and no trading experience is required. Astrobit is making trading accessible to everyone, not just the wealthy. You can effortlessly trade directly on the blockchain or other exchanges through various strategies created by experts or bring your own strategies. It's as simple as buying a new video game and launching it on your favorite console. With Astrobit, you now have the opportunity to take control of your financial future. It's your turn now. Use code 100X to get 20% off. Yeah, I, I guess maybe this is a good spot to, to kind of go backwards and talk a bit about what kind of industry I came from. So I, yeah, I actually started yeah. off in, in social media and marketing. Um, so I worked with L'Oreal, visited Dubai, Dubai Tourism for a couple of years. And then um, professionally working with gaming actually was through esports. So okay. a lot of MENA region, like esports campaigns and, and tournaments, um, like the Rainbow Six League that happens every year with Ubisoft oh. and NVIDIA, like the League of Legends um, tournaments that happen with Red Bull and Riot and so on. So I actually just started off in gaming. So I wasn't like really, like I wasn't coming from a crypto perspective into GameFi. It was more so like I played video games all my life. And I Same. worked in gaming and I can very clearly recognize that there are issues with gaming as we know it. Like, you know, like it's, it's, it's negatively seen. Like the whole game five space is, is very kind of 
taboo almost and, and people hate it in the traditional gaming space but like they also don't acknowledge that gaming is broken um there are a lot of issues you know working in esports i've seen kids win like hundred thousand dollar prize pools that they only see the money like seven months later because the kid lives in the philippines and he's 16 and you know he's underage so technically his bank needs to talk to the central bank which talks to the organizers bank and like that is broken that needs yeah. to change Right. And crypto fixes that. You know, I know it's cliche. I know people make fun of it, but like actually, like Web3 genuinely fixes that. Um, and then personally, I think I played all the FIFAs since like the first okay. FIFA that I've ever touched, which I think like FIFA 2002 or something. Um, I'm 27. So you know, not that old, but old enough. Um, and since Ultimate Team came out, which I think was FIFA 14, I was always like, I was super frustrated that I had to buy coins and open packs every single year and start from scratch. And to me, mm -hmm. it just like it makes so much more sense to reward me as a loyal user by like letting me convert some kind of percentage of those coins or letting me sell a card and then like take the right. money and, and jump into the next one. Because at least I'll, I'll have a head start like as a loyal player that has spent hundreds of hours in a game, just updating the squad list and like improving the graphics the next year shouldn't require me to spend the same, you know, whatever it is. Like maybe I spend a hundred bucks, but I know people that spend tens of thousands of dollars like just opening packs to get ronaldo and messi and so on and to me like web3 fixes that because yeah like genuine asset ownership where you could potentially let's say own the ronaldo card sell it on a marketplace that's free and then take that money and jump into the next game with some coins to start with like i think that makes a lot more sense so i came in from the perspective of like i think the tech is really exciting and i can't wait to see how it changes things i was then surprised that the space wasn't on the same page as me because I got in and a lot of my early calls were like, oh, cool. So can I see some gameplay? And it's like, uh, no, we'll we'll share that like in Q3. But uh, would you like to invest? Right. Yeah. Right. Do you, want, you want me to give you my money for a game that doesn't exist and you can't show me anything besides concept art? Exactly. No background, nothing? Right. Yeah. And, and, and it was always, dude, it was always like, oh, but we've got people that worked on League of Legends and, you know, they were former like Ubisoft employees, but then like you look them up and it's like the junior art like director that spent three <laughs> months at the company or like the social intern that, you know, moved on two months in or whatever. And and so it was a lot of like just figuring out who's bluffing and, and what's fluff in the space and who's actually genuinely real and, and trying to build something. And I think once you find them, it's very easy to like identify them and it's it's very motivating to like start um, supporting them so a lot of the games that we see now that like are popular in the space like the alluviums the big times you know the shrapnels wildcard etc a lot of the games on the list that i shared um they're genuine game studios like they're just like they're straight up game developers and they're building something but they're using web3 tech in some way shape or form it doesn't have to be everything like it, maybe it's not a token maybe it's just nfts or maybe it's not nfts maybe right. it's just a token it could be anything right but um they're essentially actually trying to build a proper game to hold its ground like amongst the other traditional games i think a big issue was people were saying like this is a really good game for a web3 game and like the standard was immediately for a web3 game yeah yeah for like a web3 it's a back game. Compliment. yeah it was it was <laughs> the best of the worst it was basically like yeah like like nice try but i probably wouldn't spend like any of my time playing this if, if i'm being completely right, honest and I, and I think that's the reality is like i i don't know like i guess if i'm playing your game and it's it's a new game, it's in beta, it's currently being developed, then I can give some grace for that and recognize like, yeah, I don't expect a game in beta to be a polished product, but I do expect it to be a good game the same way that I would expect a web to a normal game on my PC or my Xbox to be a good game. Uh, just because it's in beta doesn't mean that it, it should be garbage. And I think that's kind of what we've seen with Web3 is that's like the excuse that, well, the whole space is in beta, so we don't have to make anything good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. I, I feel slightly conflicted. So I think, okay. honestly, a lot of game developers should not share their builds at certain early stages. I feel like they get pressured, and it's it's partly their fault because maybe they sold an NFT collection and they feel like right. they're obliged to show something to their community. And maybe you shouldn't have sold that NFT collection too early on, right? right. But I feel like if you show something and it's genuinely underwhelming, that first impression is kind of ruined. Like even if you look yeah. at traditional games, when you try a demo, it's it's usually like maybe not the final product, but close enough to what the final product is going to be like. You don't actually ever try something that's like you know bare bones. Like you never. I just uh, play tested uh, the finals on Steam. Super fun game. 
super early, barely communicated anything from the team. But like they just announced, oh, we, we're giving out like play testing codes, grab yours. I jumped in. The game's actually fun. Like it could stand its ground. What as is a, this as thing called? The finals. Game. The finals. Yeah, super the fun um, attraction shooter. You should check it out. But essentially, like the issue with Web three games is, I think sometimes they share their builds a bit too soon, or sometimes they like over inflate the expectations. Like managing expectations is so important it's even more important than web3 gaming because if you like show me all this concept art that's so sick and like this world this you know the universe that you're building blah 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 and then like you end up you know demonstrating basic tcg gameplay that doesn't really innovate on anything and it's pretty much a copy of whatever anyone else built before like then the community is underwhelmed and your floor price tanks and no one wants to give it a second look but like I do also love the fact that Web3 is all about community and like, you know, being closer yeah, than ever sure. to, to like your holders and so on. And so I feel like I understand why you would want to share that gameplay early on. You um, want people to be a part of like line. building the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think, I think it should be close enough to your actual final product, or at least if you do it early on, it should be like, you should understand who you're demonstrating this with. Like it should be a closed alpha or beta testing phase and it should be like invite only. You should have people that like come in understanding the stage that the game is in. You shouldn't just invite your community because they hold an NFT. Because then they go, right. they tweet about it. They're like, oh, you know, I spent like a hundred bucks on this NFT. The game's pretty shit. I'm not going to try it anymore. I'm selling. Versus like a game, you know, tester, someone from like, you know, a content creator, for example, that has play tested games before. Like they'll come in understanding like, oh, I see the potential. But like you guys right. still have a lot of work to do. You're looking at what's being built, not what exists yes. right now. Exactly. So yeah, it's it's a double edged sword. But yeah, I definitely feel for these studios. It's it's a challenge that I wouldn't like to be in myself. But um, yeah, no, I mean honestly, I think the bar just has to be higher in general. Like going back to our point, um, you know, I'm I'm sick of the it's good for a Web three game uh, phase, and and you know we we kind of I think part of the reason why we've reached you know the the state that we're in now where we can actually like openly uh, talk about games and review them and give them scores and like give our perspective on things that people actually listen is because we hold games accountable. So like if if a game actually comes out, um, it's pretty shit. Like we'll call it shit. We'll give it a five out of ten. Sorry, can I? I don't know if I could. Can I say no, you're shit? Good. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I was actually looking at the. Uh, I mean, your most recent reviews are. I mean, at Poke Starter, man, it's like a five, 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 three, five. Five, yeah. six, three, six, five point five, exactly. six. So the highest of the ten games there is a six. Is that pretty standard in Web three gaming right now? Or I'd are say you giving for the like stage that a lot of these? I would say like I go look at eight, IGN and I feel like their staple is like everything's an eight. Um, and if you're higher or lower than that, you've got to be really good or really bad. But like their actual average is probably an eight. Um, is your average like this normal five or six? Um, or is that just a a bad yeah, couple that's, weeks in that's gaming? It. I'd say it's it's probably the average now is probably around six to be honest. Um cool. and it's just because the games like we we are fully aware that a lot of these games are maybe not the actual finished product and we will like keep updating the review as the game progresses. We just wanted to like the whole point of us building the platform that we built was to like show someone out there that yes, we do recognize that this game is not good enough, but we also right. recommend to you this game that we think is quite good. Like the idea was cool. if we just went out and gave eight like an IGN would. Um, the issue was you just say everything's an eight. And then when I look at a exactly. game and, I, and you tell me it's an eight and then I check it out and it's actually like a five by my standard of an eight, yep. then I don't yeah, believe man. it. Like if, I, if I'm going to go play a game that I would consider an eight from a AAA studio that's not building in Web3 and then I play like, I'm not going to name drop any games that maybe aren't great right now, but I go play a game in Web3 and I'm like, dude, you're calling that an eight? Are you, are you kidding? That's exactly. like a three. And so yes. maybe in crypto, that's a five or in Web3, that's a five. But yeah, I think, I think from my experience, the games are a little bit behind, and and maybe behind's the wrong word. They're just the whole space is early. Like it's got to be hard to be a game developer in you're not just building a new game with a new studio, right? Like you're a new studio, you're building a new game, but you're also building in a new space. Like the entire space is, yeah, I mean it's so early. You're you're building in a space where there aren't. I, maybe you would disagree with me, but it feels like there aren't AAA games yet. Like at best, we're we're double A games. Um, do you feel like there's AAA games at this point? I think AAA 
as a term is just overrated in general. Um, AAA okay. is, is more about like how much money you actually end up spending on your marketing um, and like the, sh the, the sheer size of your game. Like Diablo 4 is a AAA game, but like not every successful game, like Hades wouldn't necessarily count as a AAA game. Right. It's a great game. It's one game of the year. It's, Even it's one though Hades awards. had better reviews than Diablo 4. Exactly. But like it's, you know, AAA is, is thrown around so much. And I think, you know, that's that's also an issue. But essentially what I think is it's a lot, it's already really hard to build a game as an indie studio. It's even harder to build as a Web3 indie studio because you're not right. only... You're like shrinking down every level yeah. you can get. You're like, indie, you're not you're really... indie, and the whole space yeah. is indie. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and you're, not, like, you're not competing with just like the indie games, like the 20,000 indie games that come out on Steam every year. You're also like kind of pushing certain gamers away that maybe are misled into thinking like... I have, yeah, are man. I have so many friends that, that love gaming and they, it's like the regular talking point. They'll regurgitate. They're like, NFTs are horrible for gaming. Why are NFTs horrible for gaming? And they can't give you a reason besides NFTs are horrible for gaming. Uh, when if you actually look at it, like, dude, you're just getting the ownership. Like, exactly. I've never been an NFT bro necessarily, but and I own almost no NFTs. I think all of the NFTs I own actually are gaming related NFTs. Um, but dude, like the tech is there. You just get to own your assets. Why would you not want that? But yeah, Web 2 gaming hates Web 3 gaming. And maybe that's uh, my next question is like, why, what made you switch from working with Ubisoft, working with Epic, working with Riot? Like you were working in honestly like the heart of gaming, the pinnacle of gaming. Why switch to like us nerdy guys in the corner of gaming that are kind of the gaming rejects right now? I think the broader gaming industry is almost rejecting Web3 gaming. And it's like like you're alluding to, it's an uphill battle. We've got to prove our worth, why this space deserves to exist. What made you move to, like what made you see the vision of Web3 gaming? Yeah, I think it's it's partially seeing that the status quo is just not good enough in gaming itself. And then also partially like seeing the potential of what Web3 tech could lead to. Like I think for me from the beginning, it's always been about, I genuinely just think, there's so much potential. It's just not being communicated properly. Um, ever since I got into the space, all these like terms like Web3 and blockchain and, and NFT and, you know, what is an NFT? Oh, it's not fungible, blah, blah, blah. Like all this was thrown at me. And because I was willing to learn and understand and like go through that process, sure, I went through it. But I also, you know, have friends that don't have the time and will not bother. And like I had, you know, semi-pro friends that would play shooters and tournaments and things like that. And I would tell them like, hey, there's a 10K price pool for this Web3 game that I'm pretty sure you could probably kick everyone's ass yeah, in. Like, <laughs> they, they, they wouldn't be interested because they were like, oh, I've got to like download this new launcher and then I've got to get into this game. And you're telling me I need to set up some wallet thingy. Like that's hey, just too well, much. Well, I'll, I'll tell you straight up, man. If there's a shooter with a 10K prize pool, send it my way. I'll <laughs> download it. But yeah, like it, that, that's the challenge. But I think when you like break it down and, and just look at what is a Web3 game, like what is a blockchain powered game? It's not meant right. to like shift from the focus of a game being fun or providing a, you know, a great experience or, you know, having a lot of like fun memories with friends or whatever. It's, it's, it's not meant to change any of that. It's just meant to improve the experience by solving a problem, whether that's like direct cash payouts, if you join a tournament, whether that's actually owning your assets in game so that you can, you know, maybe trade them on a marketplace. Like this stuff exists already. CSGO skins and loot boxes have right. existed forever. And no one looks at that as like a bad thing in the space. No one frowns upon, you know, the, the moment, I think Diablo 4 on launch had like five or six sites running that were just offering you to like buy gold and buy items and buy accounts like on launch day. And no one really frowns upon that. But it's the fact that it's just been so miscommunicated and the Kotakus and the IGNs of the world have already like taken that side of, oh, we are against NFT games and all of these authors and editors. And like, you know, I get into so many arguments with them because I'm not a, like, I'm not an NFT guy. I'm not a, a crypto person. Like I haven't been in this space since the beginnings. I didn't buy the first Bitcoin. Like I got into the space and, you know, professionally in 2021, I got into the space as a retail investor in like 2018. It's not that long ago. Um, I come from, you know, a, a marketing. You've been here longer network. than me. Like I, I'm a crypto guy and you've been here longer than me. I got into the space <laughs> yeah. professionally in 20, I guess late 2021, like December, 2021. Um, and investing, I mean, not 2019, probably a year before that 2020. And so I wasn't a crypto guy either. I came because I thought, dude, if 
I just want to see where like technology is going. If this is the future, what the heck does that mean? That's what brought me in. And a lot of what brought me in was literally the gaming. I mentioned the only NFTs I own right now are all gaming related NFTs because I think it's cool. Exactly. And and like that's 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 my whole point. I was just looking at the space, I guess, with interest. And I thought that, you know, just from my experience working on communicating, you know, all of these tournaments and all these campaigns, like maybe I could come here and help communicate things better. Um, and it, you know, I, I first started off by just building a community for PokerStarter Gaming. At the time, it was just a Discord server. And, you okay. know, a lot of these Discord servers or, or guilds or whatever you want to call it were essentially like just ways for people to jump in and, and ask to rent assets to like, you know, earn and, and play to earn games. Um, right. And, you know, we experimented with that, but very quickly realized that like that's just not sustainable. And, and the best way forward was to build an actual community of gamers that just wanted to jump in and ask who's down for some Fortnite games or who's down to play Pokemon Unite or who's down to, you know, play League of Legends and then start like educating them on Web3 games and start getting them into more and more games, get them early access, get them into these like, you know, upcoming studio titles. And that way you can actually like phase them in naturally rather than like just, you know, force this stuff on them. And so we built that first. And then we, like, people started asking, like, what are you guys testing? What are you looking at? And then we started streaming some of the stuff that we were testing. Like, we genuinely do, like, you know, play testing, um, like, streams with with the developers. And then that, like, progressed into us making YouTube content. And then we just decided, okay, everything's a bit too scattered. Let's make a platform. And let's, like, put everything in that one platform where we can show people, like, what the space has to offer. But also, like, be very objective about it. And, like, just not throw everything at your face and say, oh, this is great. You need to try it. But also, like, tell you... This is great. We're giving it an eight. We think it can be better, but we also think this is pretty terrible. So we're giving it a, a three, for example. Um, yeah. And it's like, it's it's not meant to harm, you know, we, we argue with game studios all the time and they tell us like, you know, this is going to harm us and people are going to think the game is bad. It's genuinely not meant to be that. And we will always like retract a review or increase the the rating if the improvements are made in the game or like if it progresses yeah. past the stage it's in. But it's just meant to be like a compass, right? Like we're we're trying to build that gold standard of this is what a Web3 game looks like and should be like and should play like. Everything else is extra. Like all of the what tech is, is being used and what chain is it on and, you know, does it support this, you know, ERC? Does it that Like none of that should matter to you as a gamer because we don't ask questions about like, does this game use Amazon Web Servers or is it like on... Right. I just want to know if it's fun, man. Like, get yeah, away like, from like, the other... if it's on Google Cloud, Cloud or... It's fun yes. to play. Exactly. So that's that's essentially what we, you know, tried to do. And I think, like, I guess my, my mission here is to just try and maybe improve content and, like, the way content is curated and created in this space because the issue with, like, Web3 in general is there's money on the line. Right. And so as a maybe like you'd probably relate, like if you invest in something, you want to see it win. And what tends to happen is you then have a very skewed, biased perspective. So this is amazing when it's terrible. You would never actually play it if you hadn't thrown a thousand dollars into their NFT. uh, And you're just hoping that it'll become good. We see the same thing with tokens, right? Like I see. Our, our show, the 100X Gem Show, the one that's just about looking at tokens to see if they can 100X. That happens all the time. People will suggest projects like this one's going to 100X. And I look at it and like within seconds, I know, nope, this is a dead project that will never go anywhere. Like they have nothing here. This is dead. It will not 100X. But the reason you think it will is because you put money in. And so you're so hopeful that it will that you're trying to convince other people while you try to convince yourself. Exactly. So I think that's what they're doing with the gaming. Yeah. Which I think is fine in an investment capacity because in the end of the day, like when you're investing in something, you're going with that mindset of, I want to invest to like make money, right? Now the issue right. with gaming is when you make it like, I want to play games to make money, you've slightly tweaked that narrative. It's no longer- you become, I want, Yeah, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, it's no longer, I want to play this game because it's fun. I want to play this game because it's addictive. I want to play this game because I want to be the best player on the leaderboard. It's, I want to play this game to make money. And the way the game will give you money is just not sustainable because it'll continue giving you money. And the more people come in, you'll the, the less money you'll make and you'll get frustrated. And all of a sudden, this game is not shiny anymore and you'll jump into the next one. And so it becomes a, a vicious cycle of like, what token is hot now and how quickly can I get it until I can move into the next game? Which, listen, I'm all for making money playing video games. Like esports players have done that for for years and years like there's nothing wrong with making money playing video games content creators make money playing video games i just think the way you make money playing video games 
has to be slightly different. You can't look at it as yeah. the way I'm going to make money is by buying, you know, these assets and I'm going to hold on to them. And in like two weeks time, it'll 10 X and I'll sell them because it's just, it doesn't work that way. Someone has to be silly enough to buy them off you for 10 X the amount. And the only way they'll actually want that is if the game is so good, they have to get in on it. And, you know, frankly speaking, no game in the space is that good. Like not even dude, like Diablo was what? $70, I think. Yeah. And people were like, oh my God, these $70 games. Like there's literally uproar in the traditional gaming space about like new game titles just being listed at 70 bucks. Like people are like, oh, bring back the $50. And the NFT game. access for these games is like, dude, I, I can't tell you how many I've had reach out to us and be like, oh, you guys want to try it? It's, it's 500 bucks for the NFT and you get beta access. No, dude. Exactly. <laughs> you want me to pay like $500 to try your game? Are you kidding times. me? Exactly. And so like, sure, there are, you know, free to play games now. And there's a lot of stuff that you can try without paying for. But again, if the incentive is to make money, and if the way for you to make money is to like, you know, throw 500 bucks at a game, it's always just going to backfire. So, you know, I, I argued earlier, um, I think like a couple of weeks ago, I was arguing with someone and then I ended up tweeting about it. I was saying 99% of the time your game doesn't need a token. And mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that. I think the 1% still applies. I think people can pull it off. I think there are sustainable ways where you can like have, you know, tournaments and prize pools. And the only way you can get the token is if you're actually good at the game. So it's more like compete to earn than it is play to earn in a way, which quite frankly is, you know, the right. norm, like esports players compete to win a prize pool money. So that's like not outlandish as a concept, but um, just like this, this logic of, oh yes, I will throw money at something and I will defend it with my life. And I will say it's the best game ever until everyone's onboarded so that I can then sell because they will become my liquidity. Like, right. That's just, yeah. You can't use your, you can't use your friends as exit liquidity, right? It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's a mess. Yeah. I mean, you make some interesting points in my mind. You, it almost becomes like, I, I've seen so many complaints from gamers over the years of like, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. Like this game could be, and this is web two, right? This game could be so good if it wasn't for these corporate overlords that just threw in this specific mechanic, whatever it is, to, to earn some money and it ruins the game. But then they become that same corporate overlord in web three, wanting those money making mechanics that ruin the fun gameplay. So like there has to be a focus on gameplay first and money second. And I, and I, I would say that in, and web two game, regular gaming as well. If you make a good game, people will pay for it and will play it for years, right? Skyrim didn't have to put uh, weird loot box mechanics or or play to earn tokens in it in order to sell the same game with 10 different versions over 15 years, right? They, they make tons of money because they made a good game that people like playing. And I think people forget that, that you have to put in some weird mechanic to make quick money and then the game dies and you introduce a new iteration of that game 12 months later. Just make a good game and people will play it forever and will spend money on your game forever. Yeah, I think Baldur's Gate 3 is a good case study for the entire industry. Um, the fact that, you know, it's it's been such a long time. It's, it's crazy saying this now, but it's been such a long time that we haven't had a full featured game like on release where you don't need to like download any DLC. You don't need to pay for a battle pass. You don't need to like unlock any, you know, cool tiers to to get to you know the next map or whatever it's literally right. like the game is the disc you bought the game, play the game. game. <laughs> have it done um and i yeah. think that's very refreshing that's what i grew up doing why is that not the norm anymore exactly like it, it it kind of it went back in a way it's, it's, it's so funny gaming is always just a cycle we went back to the arcade phase where you had to constantly put money in to play like that's yeah. that's where we are now in gaming where it's like Sure, you can get the game for free, but if you want to do X, Y, and Z, you have to put money in. And not exactly. only do you have to do it like now, you have to do it every single season. And how many seasons there are, we'll let you know later. Like, we'll figure it out along the way. And so you end up getting into like Warzone and you're buying every single battle pass and you're constantly putting money in. And then they announce Warzone 2 and they say, oh, by the way, none of your skins will transfer. So lame. That was, and I, dude, I got beef with COD. I told you before some some context to this. I mean, I'm a COD player through and through, dude. Like I was briefly, this is briefly, but briefly Machinima sponsored COD player back like, I don't know, 15 years ago, 20 years, whenever Machinima was still around and relevant. I honestly forget. It was like 2008 or something, 2009. Um, we, were, we were making videos for Machinima, playing Call of Duty. That would have been like Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 1 days. Yeah, um, the good days. Yeah, man. I've been a fan of COD since the literal beginning. I was playing COD 1. My first LAN parties were Halo 1 and Call of Duty 2. Like, I'm, I'm a COD fan from the OG days. Uh, I met my wife playing Call of Duty uh, 
Black Ops 2 zombies, probably. Um, one of the That's Black crazy. Ops games, playing zombies. Uh, maybe Black Ops 3 zombies. But met my wife playing Call of Duty. I love COD. She still plays Warzone. I mean, last night she was playing while I was watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, she's, you know, we play a lot of COD. We've always played COD. But their decisions recently just infuriate me. And I think that's part of why I'm so excited about seeing Web3 Gaming come out. And you touched on that point a little bit of like, hmm, there's like a balance here where you want to make a good game as a studio, but at the same time you want to involve the community. And I do think that there is like a possibility for gaming to evolve outside of the technology, outside of blockchain, just because of the culture of Web3, that everything is so community-based, I think players will have more input than maybe ever before. And that's part of why I'm so excited about it. Is like, I would just love to see games made by gamers, for gamers, with gamers. And I actually think that Web3 has the capacity for that in a way that Web2 didn't. 100% agree. I think, you know, you can't, I mean, you can technically in theory, but he'd never reply. You can't really go on Twitter and like say, hey, CEO of Activision, you're being an exactly. idiot. Stop doing that. Like he'll never get back to you. It'll just, but it'll go jump into like, Discord. Yeah, it'll go into like their sentiment analysis and their social media like report or whatever, but that's it. <laughs> Whereas like in Web3, you could literally just go tweet, hey, you know, idiot, I don't think what you did here is a good idea. You should actually consider doing that instead. And, you know, most of the time, the founders themselves will actually reply or get back to you or like take your feedback into consideration. And the yep. way that you can, you know, if they don't, what you can do is literally then, you know, decide with your money. Like you can just go and floor the asset. Like it's empowering gamers in such a way that it just has never been, you know, seen before. Like if you look at traditional gaming, if you buy a Call of Duty CD, like just a disc, you're done. Mm -hmm. Like you're a customer, you're hooked. They made their money off of you. Thanks very much. We're out. But like you can't then go and like return the game and ask for your money back or, you know, shout at someone at GameStop and, and be like, you guys lied to me. This game's not as good. Like that just doesn't happen. They've made their money. They moved on and they're probably planning the next Call of Duty by the time you actually bought the exactly. current one. Whereas like in Web3 Gaming, it's like, dude, I have been here from the beginning. I was like, you know, member number 203 in your Discord. I've seen everything from the start. I think this is a bad idea. Most of the time, you'll get a response like, why do you think so? Let's talk. Let's get on a call. Um, can you like lay down the points that you think are making this a bad decision? And so I think this is so much closer when you when you talk about like community and being close to, to the game studios. I think Web3 Gaming in general is just so much closer. Like We have the luxury of working with all these game studios. My conversations with these games are not like you know me and the BD team talking about what kind of collaborations we could do. It's like right. me and the founder, like asking like, why are you building this the way that you're building it? What have you taken inspiration from? Oh, okay. I didn't know you were a big Overwatch player. Ah, now I see it in your design. Sounds good. Okay. Like you're genuinely working with these game developers every single day. And I think that's really exciting. Well, even, um, but even, I mean, I would say even like, that's you as someone who is, I mean, Pokestarters, like you guys are the IGN of, of Web3 Gaming. Like you're a, you are a big name in I mean, this space. So it's it. almost expected that you would get to have those conversations. <laughs> um, but I feel like I'm not someone, right? Like, I guess I've got enough followers and a, a check mark that I pay for. So is it relevant? Um, but like, I've got enough followers that maybe people would respond. But you wouldn't think that I'm like, I'm no one prominent in GameFi. I, I have a show in broader crypto. But even the, the projects that are the games that I've reached out to, I mean, I get a response pretty quick. There was one that I was trying, man, what was it? Let me, I could pull it up right here. I was trying, um, it was a shooter. It was a shooter. It was not meta ops. Um, shoot, well, I forget, but it was a shooter, um, like an arena shooter, a 5v5 or something. And I reached out to them and just said, hey, like I'm, I had some questions about it. And they responded immediately and were like, oh, you want to just play test it? And one of their guys from their team jumped into Discord with me and created a server and like immediately let me play the game. That would not happen in regular gaming. And I am not somebody prominent. So it's not like I'm, my point is, it's not just because you guys are from Pokestarter that they're having those conversations. It's because that's like the cultural standard in Web3. 100%. I mean, you say that now, but like we started in the same spot, that's right? Like, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, like when we, when we kick things You've off. You've evolved just, to becoming a prominent exactly. name, but you weren't like, before. I was just the annoying dude in the Discord asking for like an admin to, there. Like, to the founder. <laughs> And then getting them on a call, telling them what we're trying to build. It wasn't even like built yet. Telling them like, hey, we're right. trying to do this. It would be great to like, you know, be in touch and so on. 
until we got to the stage that we're in. And a lot of, you know, content creators in Web3 are doing the same thing where like they're becoming authorities, whether it's like in a genre. So like this guy only plays MMORPGs or shooters, or like that guy only plays like gala games and, you know, the entire ecosystem of games that they have. So like yeah. you can, in Web3, you can actually start this now because like the space doesn't exist. Like it just started. And so like there's no, um, you know, Asmon Gold to compete with. There's no like PewDiePie in the space to compete. You're genuinely like, the first adopter you're you're the right. earliest possible adopter and so your feedback is actually very valid and it's very valuable for these studios and so what we ended up doing was just like handing out our feedback like hey guys we know you talk to a lot of people and a lot of them are probably investors in your project and many of them are probably exchanges that are trying to get your token listed but we're actually gamers and we think this is a really bad idea and you should probably not do this and then they would respect that and say, like, why do you think that? And, oh, okay, we didn't see it that way. And, you know, we're just being told that this is the way things are done in Web3. Exactly. And you need to know, like, even if you look at, dude, if you look at the, the recent Zynga announcement, um, it got a lot of mixed, you know, emotion because some people are like, oh, my God, finally, Zynga's getting in. Yes, this is going to be amazing. Others were like, look at their Twitter. Why are they working with crypto influencers? None of these guys are gaming folks. Is this the best approach? Like, you need to understand that a lot of these studios are, also new to this so like they're exploring the space they're trying to work with what seems to work they're trying to like figure out how do we connect to you know this dgen community of nft traders yeah. but also not lose sight of the gamer that i'm building the game for because exactly. at the end of the day like maybe you have two two separate audiences and you should view it that way one is the speculator that might buy your assets and just trade them because they want to make money but the other is the gamer that wants to play your game and maybe they will make money maybe they won't but you you have two genuine different personas and you can't just decide to like give up on one because if you give up on the web3 persona you're just a traditional game so exactly. you've just you've cut your reach by more than half for absolutely no reason you should probably go back to traditional gaming yeah, yeah if you sense. cut the gamers out then you're just <laughs> a defi project and you're trying to cater to traders and you should not call this a game you should just make this a protocol or something so yeah, right, it's, it's, exactly. It's yeah, a, I don't envy Web3 game studios, but that's why we try to do what we do, which is like try to support them, try to give them ideas, try to give them feedback. And at the same time, try to spotlight the ones that maybe aren't as hyped up, but are genuinely really high quality. Some of the games on the list, we were talking about the thread earlier, like some of these games yeah. people maybe have never heard of. Some are pretty like, you know, predominant, like people know sh what Shrapnel is, people know what Wildcard is, but like yeah, not I mean, many people so play so these are the game, I mean, a, a quick 10 second run through for anyone listening. You mentioned Wildcard. Um, I've heard of Wildcard. You mentioned Shrapnel. I follow Shrapnel, and I've been following them since the start. Um, you mentioned Play Big Time. Obviously, heard of that. Sparkadia. I'd slightly heard of it. Um, Superior. And I, I would say I'm someone that's like pretty nerdy about the space. But I had never heard of the Phantom. Um, I had never heard of the Treeverse. I had never heard of Block Lords. I'd never heard of Mythic Protocol. Um, so I don't know. Out of the ten you listed, four of them I've never heard of. And I'm someone that like. I spend time in the space. <laughs> so yeah, you, you got some, some niche ones there that I want to check out. Exactly. And like, there's, there's so many more, like, you know, last year towards the end of the year, we did, um, we did our own version of the game yep. awards essentially. And we got so Web much like the game three awards. Yeah. I watched <laughs> yeah. the whole, the whole event. Nice. Okay. I appreciate that, man. Um, I'll ask you later about what you thought. Cause we're doing the, this year's one uh, a bit later. Oh, cool. But um, we essentially did that to just like highlight the top games in the space that weren't getting enough credit, that weren't, you know, getting the same attention that maybe Axie was at that time. Um, and a lot of people were like, the games are not even ready. How are you going to give awards based on alphas and betas? This is a stupid idea, blah, blah, blah. But after we actually finished our awards, a bunch of other awards came up. And that to me was the win because all of a sudden people are now starting to recognize games in the space and they're starting to give them, yeah. you know, a pat on the shoulder and say, what well, you're building is great. You should keep going. Like, this is amazing. And we're going to give you a bunch of clicks and views and likes. Um, cause I think that goes a long way for, you know, a, a studio that's trying to grind out a web three game that is getting all this backlash from traditional gaming folks. Um, that's not getting on IGN or Kotaku. That's not getting an easy listing on Steam. That's getting flagged on Epic as a blockchain game. Like the first thing you see on any Web3 game on Epic Games is this is a blockchain NFT game. It encompasses blah, 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 blah. You need to keep in mind. Like all these games are already struggling with so much. The least we can do as people in the space is try to like give them some exactly. credit. Exactly, pop them up. Give them some support. Exactly. Even if it's just a high it. five, a little trophy and some like you know services for free here or there like we got I, I think we gave away over a million dollars in prizes and a lot of it was like you know free services some of it was like grants but just that i think goes a long way in the space 
Um, and, you know, it's something we're committed to do every single year because, like you said, the way people find out about more games is just by other gamers talking about them. Dude, like, it's it's a very predominantly word-of-mouth industry. Like, you play games because IGN says it's a 10 out of 10. You play games because your best friend says you need to download this and, and run duos. You play games because you see something on YouTube and you're like, holy shit, this is sick. Like, you don't play games yeah. because there's a billboard sign that says play Apex. You don't play games right. because... You know, you got served a, an ad on Facebook when you were scrolling through cat pictures and it said it's like way more or organic or it, yeah. or it's, it at least needs to appear organic. Like if it's if it's running ads, it feels organic versus exactly. just traditional ads. Exactly. And like the best place to advertise these games is to go to like game game streamers and, and gaming content creators. And quite frankly, everyone in Web3 is still pretty small. Like even us, I think we've got like 7000 subscribers on YouTube. We're tiny. Right. Like, sure, we, we're sitting on like almost 80K on Twitter, but like on YouTube, where a lot of people consume gaming content, like right. we're almost non existent. You compare us to like Asmund Gold and PewDiePie and like all of these guys, like they bring in millions of views on a daily basis. And so the least we can do, I think, is recognize the ones that are building quality games, you know, give them a okay. high five, give them a pat on the back, top them up, like you said. Um, but also like try to help them build what they're building and, and like just do some of the heavy lifting on the marketing side ourselves. Um, I think that's kind of my calling in the space, just someone that's worked in social media and marketing, um, got into gaming, and then is now in Web3 Gaming. I feel like it's almost a responsibility for me to like highlight yeah. um, and do a bit of social media like legwork for some of these games. Like, dude, we set up the game pages for each game on the website are set up in a way where it's meant to be like almost a wiki. So like you go, you find out like an overview, what are the classes, you know, what are the different game modes. Um, we're just trying to basically do some of the work that a game normally would end up doing themselves or the IGN and Kotaku's of the world would normally do for a game. But just because we know IGN and Kotaku might not enter the space for the next three years, we're like, hey, we'll do it ourselves. When they're here, we've won, right? Like when they enter the space, it's done. The game is done. Yeah. We've done our part. This is now a norm. Just like free to play, just like mobile games, just like all of these different trends that were seen yeah. as like, you know, obscene, like, what do you mean free to play? Like, I have to pay to play a game. If it's free, it's probably low quality and not good enough. Like all of these things were also considered fads once upon a time. And I have, you know, I'm, 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 I've got enough conviction in this space to say this will be just a norm in general. And, and you yeah. might not even know, like you might just pick That's up the next, point. yeah, you, you'll pick up the next game and there will be web three tech integrated somehow. And you'll never know. I don't know if you've seen the PlayStation stars app. Mm -hmm. or like browser app thing or whatever but basically like sony's got their own version of like digital collectibles based on in-game achievements now and basically the way it works is there are like challenges and for example if it says like play god of war when you play the game in the app you then get rewarded with like a let's say you know a blade from from kratos or something that just sits in a okay. in a different collection or whatever like that to me just sounds like Sony is testing. And I mean, they filed for patents. We know oh, they're, sure. they're looking at the tech. But like that to me just sounds like give it time, it'll come. It'll happen. Like these things will become norms. Maybe it's like maybe we don't call it any of the stuff we're calling it today. It's, it's not going to be blockchain gaming. It's not going to be Web3 gaming. Maybe it's just games with digital collectibles, games with asset ownership, you know, like games with replayability in future versions. It could be anything. I don't know what it's going to be called, but I'm here for it. And I think yeah. that's, that's all tech, that matters. The tech's you know? going I mean, you answered yeah. a, a, I had a question or two about the tech and you kind of just been nailing it naturally. I really only have like a, two more questions, but they're both centered around like the games and the genres in the space that are developing. And so I'm curious, um, your, like your background as gamer. And the reason I ask is I think it's fairly relevant. Like if, if I tell someone, well, I didn't really think Diablo 4 is that good, but I've never played that genre or that's not the genre that I play. Um, that's, that's not saying much. Or if I say, oh my gosh, this game is literally the best game I've ever played. And it's a junior RPG, a junior RPG. And I never played those ever. Uh, that's worth looking at because, oh, this guy that doesn't like this genre now likes this game. What do they do to cross you over? Um, and so in that sense, like I was telling you before the show started, I mostly play shooters and RPGs. It's rare that I dip out of those two genres shooters because I love the competitive nature. Um, I love competing. It's what my wife and I play together. It's how I connect with my friends socially all around the world as we play shooters together. Um, and then I play when I just want like my me time, I play RPGs. Uh, what are your favorite, like not even in crypto genres, like what's your background as a gamer? What do you like playing? 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, um, I think we have similar tastes. Um, but I've I've played almost every genre. Um, I'd say the games I've played the most tend to be the competitive ones. I've played a lot of Call of Duty um, in the past. I've played a lot of FIFA, to be honest. Um, but I also sunk so many ungodly hours into like League of Legends, and so I also like tried MOBAs. Yeah. But I also recognize that not every MOBA's for me. Um, like I tried Dota and I got kind of bored. Um, you know, no, no hate there, but it's just, I think League is just, I think for me, it's it's more about the action and like League is so much more fast paced and there's a lot more like, I guess, active mechanical involvement rather than like strategy and so on. I think I get bored easily with those games, except like, I think I mentioned in that thread as well, like, you know, strategy games are kind of my guilty pleasure. Like if I'm trying to just chill, I'll maybe load up Civ five and like start a new campaign um, as like ancient okay. Egypt or something just for the sake of, you know, going through that experience. One thing that I definitely love and just sadly doesn't exist yet in this space is um, single player, like story driven games. So, you know, the God of Wars, um, the Horizons. You, so do the you SF. think, cause, cause that was going to be like my next question is, do you think there are like, as far as genres go, are there genres that are popular right now just because of the stage that we're at? Are there genres that might get popular later on? Um, with that being a great example, I know you mentioned that there's you you had one in your your thread that was like, well, this is probably the closest we have to a story game. And I play a lot of story games. I you know half the time I'd rather play a good story game than watch a movie for the story. Do you see yeah. that coming? Is there a reason why it won't happen? Yeah, I mean, the reason is really easy. I think in the thread I mentioned Phantom Galaxies because it kind of has like that story progression thing. And it's it's really like it's it's super shallow at the moment. So it's not as detailed. Um, I think it's just because right now the stage we're in, everyone is trying to get numbers. And the easiest way for you to like get more players in is to probably just have multiplayer in your game. And so typically, like if you're doing a story driven game, like there is no multiplayer in God of War. There is no multiplayer in Assassin's Creed, except, you know, if you look at maybe Brotherhood and a couple of those titles that tried. Um, and so a lot of these like story driven games are purely like based on the story being good. And let's say the cinematics and the graphics and the gameplay and yep. the mechanics of the combat, etc. But the issue with those games is like there has to be a compelling IP that drives a large user base. Right now, Web3 games in general don't have large user bases. And so it'll be like shooting yourself in the foot if you then decide. Right. Uh, like narrow down even further and like not make the most of all of these like you know just having a multiplayer game means you have more players that's just you know simply the way yeah. it is right now um which might not be exactly true when you compare like the the big ip titles like you know i think you could make an argument for the uncharted's of the world and you know the the last of us of the world that have a lot more players maybe um or a lot more let's say sales um compared to some multiplayer games but consistently having online players, active players just means you're probably a multiplayer game. So I think that's why we haven't seen any. Um, I think that'll change. I think maybe not anytime soon, but hopefully within the next three to five years, we, we could start seeing as IP kind of, you know, grows or maybe as some IP crosses over into this space, we'll start seeing more and more games that do have some sense of story to them. Because I think those games are genuinely the ones that you have kind of like the best memories with like just as an experience overall like sure it's it's great to play with friends and you know all those like lobbies and call of duty that you remember years down the line but i also think a good you know full circle experience when you play a story game is just unforgettable like i'll never forget oh, for sure. Fukushima. i'll never forget any of the god of war games i'll never forget the last of us i'll never forget any of these titles because they just encapsulate the essence of a really good story really good mechanics, really good gameplay. I think that's lacking. Um, sadly, there just isn't something to point at right now. Um, I think it'll change for sure. as the Just as the space progresses and as more IP enters the space, I think we will start getting there. But we're not, you know, we're not even close. Yeah, I mean, I would say if, if I had to come up with a list of like my top 10 favorite games of all time, there's maybe two or three multiplayer games in there. And the rest are like Knights, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. That's my favorite game of all time. That's an nice. old single player RPG. Um, Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. Uh, those are some of my favorite games of all time. That's not multiplayer. Um, yeah. Do you think that like, I mean, I, I guess part of the, the question there is like, obviously when it comes to Web3, it's easier to implement like blockchain tech and reasons for the tech and, and multiplayer as well. Like you're touching on the fact that, dude, we just need users because it's a brand new space. What about like most of the utilities that I ever see people say, well, this is why blockchain matters for gaming this is why gaming needs to go web3 tied to multiplayer games owning these 
these assets uh, or the skins or the guns or the like the swords or owning things that you would naturally be trying to get in a multiplayer game to gain different advantages or experiences. Like, does that tech translate to single player games? I think there's an argument for it. It probably isn't the same ideal way that you currently look at like Web3 tech being integrated. But for example, you know, um, we were just talking about Diablo 4. So let's go back to that. Um, the challenge that they had where the first, I think, thousand players to reach level 100 would get their name etched on like a statue. Like, I think stuff like that with blockchain tech is super powerful because like you actually have a sense of ownership over it. Like imagine if, you know, um, Santa Monica Studios said the first 1,000 players to finish the God of War storyline or like the first 1,000 players to get a, a platinum trophy or to complete the game entirely will like get a, a certain collectible. Right. And like you will be able to then right. show that you actually own this. Granted, this think, dope armor set. <laughs> exactly. Like, dude, I used to be, I don't know if, 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 if you were the same, but I used to be a, a huge trophy collector. Like, I'd hunt trophies, I'd play games and like go through walkthroughs and guides and so on just to get all the trophies. Like, yeah. I don't have a way to showcase that beyond taking a screenshot of my like PSN profile. Like, I, I genuinely don't have anything to show for it. I think I've got like 25 platinum trophies. You know, I've, I've played games on my PlayStation since PS3. So I've got some, some like PS3 platinum trophies in there. And the only way I can show that to you is like just taking a screenshot or like sharing my yeah, profile. Like my that. gamer score. I mean, it's the same thing on Xbox. I have friends that like grind gamer score and play games they don't even like just to up their gamer score. But at the end of the day, honestly, my thought process is why, dude? You gain nothing from it and no one can even see it. Exactly. <laughs> like it's on your imagine, Xbox imagine profile. Imagine. And now quickly a word from our sponsors. Introducing Web3 Talent by Obsidian, your one-stop shop for finding high-quality and vetted Web3 talent. If you're building in Web3, nothing is more important than having both the best and the most trustworthy talent on your team. Find out more at obsidianfi.com. What if you did? That's the question that I have. What if you did? What if... You know, owning a platinum trophy in a game entitled you to something or you could prove you know, on the blockchain for everyone to see that you were one of the first, you know, 100 people to finish this game, or you were one of the first 1000 people to platinum this game. Um, or, you know, you were the one that like, look at all these games with speed trials and things like that. Like I think Arkham, right. um, Arkham Knight had a couple where like you could run through different challenges. And if you're like the first on the leaderboard, maybe you get an NFT. Like there's so much potential beyond just oh, okay, you know, you can you can sell an asset here and do this and do that. Because even like, if you look at Diablo, technically, sure, you can argue it's, it's kind of multiplayer. But if you play Diablo on your own, right? Like, you could still technically use Web3 tech to like sell assets and like exactly. trade gold and, and do all of these things. Um, as long as there's an economy that's like within the game and it's, it's, it's like a full-on closed loop, I think Web3 tech can still add a lot of value to these games. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I just think we're not there because the IP is not there and single player games are just harder. Like, Do you think to, the first single player games then will be like IPs from Web 2 coming into Web 3? Or do you think it'll be someone like, I'm trying to think like games off the top of my head, someone like Star Atlas or Alluvium or Gods Unchained releasing, a, or Metalcore, uh, releasing a game off the side uh, that is like in the same universe and it's a single player game once their game is actually popular? I mean, Superior is PVE, so okay. you could argue it's kind of close to being a story. It's not really like, there is some sense of story, but it's not really like as as captivating. It's essentially like the world is flooded with superheroes and they all like are dying and you have to kind of like fight to kind of free the world or whatever. But basically, like there are PVE games. And I think, you know, I mentioned Phantom Galaxies has some kind of PVE component or some story driven component. I think maybe they might keep building on it. I don't think anyone from traditional gaming will, you know, shoot in the dark in this space. I think they will wait for someone to kind of prove that, you know, this could work and then they'll get in. Like, you know, we, we saw Maple Story is now getting into the space, Zynga's getting into the space, but they would have never gotten into the space if the Star Atlases and the Illuviums and the Big Times and right. so on entered. And so I think someone has to try for everyone else to start paying attention. Who that someone is, you know, we could argue about and we could figure out maybe a bit later. But um, yeah, I don't think it'll come from outside. Um, unless if hopefully maybe someone proves me wrong and like a huge IP enters the space, but I think it might be like the, just the casual 
um, indie style story driven game, like, you know, the, the Sifus of the world or the Hades of the world, like games right. that are just fun. They've got a nice, compelling storyline. They don't need to, you know, outdo themselves. They don't need to do a battle pass. They don't need to Does do it need to be Baldur's player. Gate. Doesn't exactly. need to be Skyrim. <laughs> exactly. Like a game that just knows its limitations and just launches as a full feature game and then uses like Web3 Tech in an innovative way. I think that then opens the door for someone in traditional gaming to say, hey, that's interesting. Because we know Ubisoft is paying attention. Like they're launching yeah. a game soon, Champions Tactics. We know Sega's paying attention. They're launching a game soon. So like all these studios are aware of the space. They're just like kind of scared Waiting of the backlash. I think yeah. they're waiting to see the actual success stories come out before they pull the trigger. Exactly. And then, still you know, waiting. Like, they'll come in and they'll just like, you know, like sweep all of the, the attention immediately. But they're also like waiting to see like, what's the sentiment like? You know, is this going to get grilled by gamers? Is IGN well, and because, Kotaku, I mean, you know? Ubisoft was the was one of the first to announce it. And the immediate response was so naked. I mean, I remember last year, I think yeah. they like, they pulled back immediately because the response about NFTs was so negative. Yeah. And and then Which they kind of have been still doing it in, in the shadows a bit. Like they did a Assassin's Creed yeah. collection, I think, not too long ago. And now they're doing Champions Tactics, which is like a straight up full-fledged Web3 game um, that's launching on Oasis. So I think, yeah, it's just time, man. Like I think we're we're lucky to be here at the time that we're in because we're seeing these like early days. And I think in a couple of years time, like we'll laugh about this. We'll look back and we'll say like, damn, ima like imagine how... People were so appalled by this concept, and now it's just in every other game. Yeah. Like now you just load up a game, and at the very bottom, like maybe maybe you're playing on your PlayStation. At the very bottom, it says, um, "Note: This game contains NFTs. Trade at your own discretion. Beware, you might lose your money." Like it might be as simple as that, but like you'll never ever even know. Um, and yeah. and you know, at, at that moment in time, I think. Like all of us at Poker Started Gaming, but also all of us in the space, anyone that's trying to build in the space, we're like, we've done it, we succeeded. It. <laughs> like, like we're now part of the, the the big group. Like everyone actually yeah. sees us as equal. We've we've done something. Because again, like you mentioned, I can just walk away and like go back to traditional gaming. The Rainbow Six League that I used to do every other year is literally happening right now. And like I can I can just walk back and say, Hey guys, like this is kind of boring. I'm, I'm coming back to this. But I have so much conviction in this space, and I genuinely think that gaming is broken and someone just has to do something about it. Um, and that's why I'm still here. Like, that's why I'm, I'm on this side of the equation. Love I don't it. view myself as an NFT bro. I don't view myself as a crypto person. I don't view myself as anything other than just a gamer that thinks gaming is broken and gaming can be improved. And I'm willing to, you know, die on this hill and say, you guys are a bit ridiculous with your claims about, you know, the environment and the impact of this and that. Like, that all made sense a couple of years ago when you were talking about Bitcoin and mining it doesn't make sense now when you're talking about some of these games that are building on like l2s and l3s and like it just it's not an argument anymore yeah exactly all right man i have one final question for you i know i i've, I've now kept you and talked your ear off for half an hour longer than, than you planned um i have one more question really just about some games themselves I, I mentioned to you off air for a second i uh my first pc that i built not just owning a computer but the first one i built i actually built and what is it right now? It's August. I built this in like March, intending on building it to go play test a bunch of Web3 games uh, to start actually making some content myself. Um, but then I doubled down focusing on this podcast. But eventually, eventually that game or the Web3 content will come just because I love gaming. Like that's my hobby when I'm not working. I'm I'm either outside or I'm gaming. And so my question is your your favorite games in the space right now, like if I or my audience had to just go play some games. What games should we go play? That maybe that that's not a game that has the highest score on your website, or it's maybe it's the most popular one. Maybe it's not. Just something that you've actually had fun with recently. Where what's a couple of games that we should go check out? Sure, yeah, I think um, some of the games on those on that list are, are honestly um, my favorite uh, games currently in the space. I think Wild Card is really refreshing as a concept because it's not like your typical MOBA. It's also kind of like a it's it's a weird mix of like a, a collectible card game meets a MOBA right. meets like a, a a brawler kind of game where it's like one v one, but you're also throwing cards down to summon creatures. So it's a super fun game. Uh, we tried it out a bunch of times. It's always fun because like you play PvP and you know you can just trash talk your friends whenever you destroy them. Um, so that's one I'd, I'd definitely say you should check out. You said you like Call of Duty, so I'd say keep yep. an eye out on Shrapnel. Um, I think honestly one of the cleanest like extraction shooters that I've seen in a while. 
um, and I'm comparing it to like Escape from Tarkov and, and the finals and so on. Um, that game was super fun when I tried it out at, at GDC earlier this year. Um, I think Sparkball, if you like MOBAs, like League of Legends, okay. is super fun because it's basically Rocket League mixed with a MOBA. So like there's a ball that you have to score goals with, but you're also like a character in a typical MOBA, like, you know, typical QWER abilities and um, just trying to like kill the enemy team and so on. So super fun concept. Um, I think Superior to me has so much potential, but I don't know if it has the legs, if it keeps being PVE. I think they need to introduce some element of PVP, but like the gameplay, the art, the mechanics, it's so smooth. It's actually insane how smooth the game is. Um, and then a couple of like solid shouts, I guess, depending on what type of gamer you are. Phantom Galaxies will fry your PC. Um, <laughs> the graphics, the quality is just amazing. The same can probably be said for Illuvium, but the open world is still pretty basic right now. You can't do much except like walk around and, and try to collect uh, Illuvials. But Phantom Galaxies, like the fighting, the mech, if you've ever like watched Transformers or like, you know, Gundam back in the day, like, it, it it really just feels super clean. Um, I, I didn't even mention this in the thread, but Metalcore is also one of those. Dude, check uh, this Piper out right here. Oh. I haven't played this yet, but I got a Metalcore sticker <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got no. a sticker pack. I follow them. I wanted to try that game. I think when I first followed them, well, it would have been like four or five months ago. It wasn't like, I don't know if you can jump in and play yet, but it wasn't. I'll, it was I'll like one up it's, it's, it, it. It was actually live um, this weekend. <laughs> Oh, nice! You just, you just missed a little like open Gosh, phase, thing. but you did. You did mention earlier any tournament throw you at it. Um, they're doing one at Gamescom. Uh, okay. so I don't know if you're planning to head to Germany, but they're doing like a five k tournament. I think at nice. Gamescom. Um, yeah, that game definitely has legs. I think just as a as a mech shooter in general, super fun. But yeah, like and one honestly, of my favorite games as a kid was Mech Assault. I don't know if you ever played that, but that was a, that was OG <laughs> mech shooter. I was like six when I was playing that. But. <laughs> yeah, but those, like those titles to me, I think super exciting. I, I I don't know, like Web3 has gotten me to try so many different genres. I just tried Parallel earlier as well. I'm not a big like card game fan. Um, haven't played, you know, Hearthstone or, or any of those games, but I try like Cards of Eternity, Gods Unchained, Parallel, and I'm like, okay, I, I see why people can sink hours yeah. into this. Um, so I think that's also, I guess, uh, a good thing about being in Web3, where like you just get to try all these different games that people are, you know, giving solid shouts. But rightfully so, like you said, maybe it's just not my genre, and maybe you should take that into consideration. Like yeah, context exactly. is really important. And the other thing for me, I mean, a lot of it is genre, but the other thing is I like if it's fast paced. So if it's a shooter, especially if it's a shooter, I am a controller player through and through, man. I've, I grew up playing Halo One, grew up playing COD, um, and there are almost no games with competent controller support right now if it's like a if it's gods unchained or if it's even if it's like a moba or something like that that's easier with uh mouse and keyboard for me but i am not a mouse and keyboard native i'm a i'm a controller player and so that support is lacking right now give me yeah, some 100%. shooters with controller support someday i mean I'll, I'll tell you maybe too soon to talk about this but um some of these games are planning to launch on console and I know a lot of people are like, hey, what? How's that going to work? You know, what's Sony going to say about this? Blah, blah, blah. But like, actually, some of these games are planning to launch on console. And I think that will also open up the door to a lot more gamers. Just, just like, you know, as soon as you land on the PlayStation Store, every game is the same to you, right? Like, you're not, you're not right. now going to start making all these assumptions and you're not going to be biased. You're not going to be like, oh my God, is this free to play? Is this not free to play? Is this Web3? Is this not Web3? So I think being in front of gamers there and it's, I, I just, I put up a, a thread after the one that we kind of connected on. I put up one where I think I was saying Web3 games are too hard to play. Shut up. Here are like 10 uh, epic yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, I do that. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, I'm, I'm sick of people saying like, oh, it's so hard. You can't get into the blah, blah, blah. And I think this is the right approach. I think Web3 games should go to Epic Game Store. They should go to Steam, even if, you know, you can't really do the, the Web3 stuff on Steam yet, but you should try to get attention from Steam. You should try to be on console. You should try to be where all the distribution channels are. You shouldn't try to make it so much harder on yourself by like being a game that lives on Twitter. No one gets yeah. their gaming like those from twitter i don't go to twitter looking yeah. for the next gem right like that's not how gamers find games you need to be all over content creators like playthroughs and let's plays and you need to be on all the different distribution channels that are typical to gamers and so yeah i think these games excite me but my list might change in like a month's time you know i might find new games that appeal to me all of a sudden but genuinely like i've played 
a solid like maybe 10 hours of spark ball over a weekend because it was so much fun and we played it as like a full team nice. of five. i played shrapnel until they kicked me out of the playtest session because it was in person and like it was it was turns and i had to like leave and i was asking if i could fill in for someone if they don't show up <laughs> it was that good for me um good. we've played countless hours of big time um pre-wipes because when whenever they wipe i just get really upset because all my progress is gone but i played so many hours <laughs> of big time pre-wipe um so yeah like these games are actually fun that's what people need to understand like we're no longer talking about you know idle clickers we're not talking about trying to make money clicking yeah. buttons like actual fun games i think that's where the gamers will come from and that's that's the future of where the space is heading yep exactly awesome if you're listening uh on spotify apple youtube anywhere else go try out those games uh that omar threw down I would love to hear your thoughts on them. I'm going to be trying them. I mean, re- my reality is, dude, I, I'm not having this conversation just because I'm looking where to invest, but because I genuinely think this space is so early. It's got to grow. It's got to evolve. Um, and I want to find fun games to play. I've tried a handful. And I I would say I'm not going to name drop which one sucked. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, but I've tried a handful. And very few were like, ooh, that's actually fun to play right now. They just feel like I'm playing... I don't know, something in 2008 and it's, it's 2023. I, I want to play something that feels the graphics don't need to be impeccable, but the gameplay should feel like it belongs in the generation that we're in. And, and often it, it hasn't. So it's cool to see the space growing, to see your inside perspective. I appreciate you sitting down with me, man. I know it's, it's late where you're at. Um, this is after hours. So thank you for letting us pick your brain. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks thanks for having me man i i think i just made a mental note to myself um whenever a game gives me like early access i'll pass it on to you um if it's good because i think you also deserve to to get a, a taste of awesome. what's good <laughs> space. Um, i would just, love just that because you, i feel like you're so excited that i'd hate to like come back in two months time and be like hey matthew how's it going you try any web3 games like no man i sold the pc <laughs> this sucks yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, yeah sure. we, dude we even yeah. did i mean in the bull market our Discord was a lot more active in the bull market than it is right now. I mean, we've got a little over 20,000 in there. And that was like, I would say a fraction of that engages right now daily. But we were doing, we're not even a gaming group. Like we're a crypto group and we were having gaming tournaments in there. I know we did a couple tournaments with EVIO um, that we had fun with. We did a couple, there's, there's a handful of other games. But like, dude, we're not even a gaming community. And we were doing full-on tournaments, having fun. And I would love to do that more as the... Uh, the market picks back up and, and people get more excited about the space. I'm yeah, in. I mean, I gaming, gaming is the, the bear proof industry, right? Gamers, yep. uh, gamers get locked in uh, because of a pandemic. They just buy more consoles and more games. So, um, exactly. yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> I think, I think I need to get you in uh, more of these play tests, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. I think it was in, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for sitting down. You have a great night. If you're listening yes, right man. now, make sure you'll, you'll see in the links, you'll see Omar and Pokestarter. Shoot them a follow if you haven't already. We appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you soon.